All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Millennial Momentum Podcast. This is your host, Tommy Tahoe Lamo. And if you're new to the show, thanks for joining. Um, if you're old, thanks for coming back. Um, this show is all about millennial personal development, right? So the whole goal is I know you want to get better, I want to get better, make more money, um, be in better shape have better relationships, work up the job ladder, start a business, whatever you're trying to do. Um, we're all trying to get somewhere. And I'm hoping that this podcast, the blog, everything that I put out can help be that spark of momentum, right? That forward motion with energy to help you get to your goal. I hope it helps me get to my goals as well. Um, a little bit about myself. I am full-time sales manager at a tech company in San Francisco. I do this all on the side. Uh, blog, podcast, videos, newsletter, everything. Uh, it's all me. I don't make a dime off of it. It's all um, to help myself and to help you uh, get to your goals. You know, I'm, I'm, I have a passion to help other people um, and help them achieve their goals. So the only thing you can do to really help support is if you found any of this valuable, click subscribe and review on Apple, Spotify, YouTube if you're watching it. Hello. Um, otherwise, let's get right into the show. So Today I want to do a quick book review, right? You, you saw me, if you're on YouTube, at Tommy Tahoe, you saw me with the book here, Trillion Dollar Coach, and, and I want to break this down. It's, it's a, quite an interesting story. Um, you know, some of you may know that this is my first year in a leadership role, right? So my first year in sales management, and um, you know, I want to tell a little story, and um, it was a couple months ago, and I woke up, and my heart was racing and sweating and I roll out of bed and walk over to the <clears throat> to the kitchen and stagger in there and I see it's 3.57 in the morning. And um, I set my alarm early. I get up and I get after it, but it's usually not not that early. But no matter what, I, I knew I was up. I wasn't going back to bed. And um, you know, I wasn't sure. I was I having a bad dream? Was I sick? What was going on? Um, but it just it was my mind racing from the first time of, of being in management. A little camera drop there. First time being in management and, and having some of that that pain hit me a little bit, so um, I didn't know it yet, but I was I was learning slowly. Bill Campbell's first rule, um, which is that your title makes you a manager, your people make you a leader, right? And if you're not sure of who Bill Campbell is, don't don't feel don't stress about that. I did not know who he was either a couple months ago, but he's a failed football coach at Columbia University turned Silicon Valley legend. Um, after years of working his way up through the ranks of sales and marketing at, at a few companies, then he went to Apple, uh, took a hand at, at running his own business, being the CEO, failed at that a few times. And then he became one of the greatest, he not even one of, he became the greatest executive coach of all time. Um, and he had people under his lineage of you know Steve Jobs, Sheryl Sandberg, Jeff Bezos, hundreds of other people. You can see on the back of the book here, you got Tim Cook, Cheryl Sandberg, John Doerr, Mary Meeker, Susan Woj Kiki, CEO of YouTube, and Sundar Pichai, uh, CEO of Google. So um, he's got an amazing coaching tree. And um, you know, I was about to learn from him. And unfortunately, that morning, I had not known who Bill Campbell was. I did not know anything about what he was doing. Um, and I was four months into my sales management gig, and, and I just knew um, it, it kind of felt like that dad that you see at the wedding that um, is just dancing like a goofball and he doesn't know what he's doing wrong, but he just knows it's not right. He knows he's not doing a good job and he's self-conscious about it. That was me um, in my in my new role of, of just, you know, um, the imposter syndrome and everything that comes from it. So, um, you know, as fate would have it, it was a Friday morning. I was planning to go to a networking event with, with salespeople and sales leaders and trying to just ask people, you know, ask people what was up and, and what can I do better and, and how can I learn. So I, I went there with really that main purpose of, of trying to learn. And the first person I met, I, I locked onto him and, and we connected pretty well. Um, and, you know, I just threw out my whole situation and asking for advice. And, you know, the first question he asked was, do you know who Bill Campbell is? And I looked at him, no idea. Um, and he said, all right, you should check out this book, Trillion Dollar Coach. You know, I was lucky enough to I wasn't his friend per se, but you know I came across him a few times throughout different companies, and you know the guy was amazing. He he's passed away a few years ago now, so you can't meet him, but you can learn a lot from this book. Um, and so as as fate would have it, um, that next morning or that weekend was my birthday, 
And so, you know, I'm getting gifts and, and, um, you know, that next morning I get an Amazon package at my door and it's, uh, it's for my dad and it's, it's a book, uh, a box of three books. And the one on the top is this one Royal blue right here with this gentleman with the blue hat, trillion dollar coach, the leadership playbook of Silicon Valley's Bill Campbell. Um, and so, you know, oftentimes they say what, when the, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, something like that. So I guess I was ready and, and I needed to hear it. So, you know, I wanted to say a, you know, a few things about the book, a few lessons um, in just a few minutes. And, and hopefully this helps for anyone else that's in that position of their first time management role. Uh, within two days, this book was done. It was littered with notes and underlines and stars. Um, it was something that, that I would call and, and what my, uh, you know, someone, someone that, uh, would call a quake book that just changes your life, that just changes the way you see, that view the world and helps you in the current situation. It's just the right thing at the right time. Um, and the, that first rule that came to me from him was, your people make you a leader. Your title makes you a manager. Your people make you a leader, right? And there were so many what people would call billisms in the book, right? People that were, um, you know, they, they heard the same quote from him over and over again. And those are the things that, you would hear from him and, and people remember him by, and that was one that really stuck out to me, right? And let's break it down. Like you, you, you see a lot of people with, you know, manager or founder or writer or author or podcast host or whatever in their LinkedIn title or on the web or in their email signature, whatever it is. And you could put whatever you want, but if, if you want to be a leader, you, you don't make that determination. It's the team that makes that determination. I remember watching a Tom Brady video a while back. He comes back and he speaks to Michigan football. Um, and he says of all the things that he's done, and whether this is BS or not, I'm not sure, but it, it makes sense to me. The thing that he you know, revered the most and was most proud of was being named a captain by Michigan football because it was by his peers. You know, it wasn't by um, you know, the committee that's you know, saying that you're the MVP. It wasn't the coach saying he's a starter. It was his teammates saying, hey, you are the leader of us. You know, we trust you to bring us into the battlefield, into the, into the zone, into the, these really challenging times, and, and we're all going to strive towards a communal goal. And so it's the people that make you a leader. It's not the title, right? So um, unfortunately, as I walked around at 3.57 in the morning that day, I, I did not know uh, that quote, and, and I did not know um, that, that speech from Tom Brady had not quite hit me yet. And I was you know, really seeing myself as, you know, whatever the title made me, right, truthfully. And not to say that I'm a great leader now or you know, I, that I ever will be, although I, I, I plan to be um, in the future, you know, I'm making strides towards earning that, right? And part of that is, is the trust and, and really earning it. Um, you know, the second thing that I learned from Bill Campbell is that leadership's personal, right? And a lot of people think that you come in and you have your work self and you have your personal self and you have your relationship self and your your religious self or all these different things. Um, I don't see it that way. You're one person, right? If, if you got broken up with last night or you didn't sleep well or you're feeling self-conscious about the new haircut you got or you're in massive student loan debt or, you know, or on the reverse side, something great happened, right? And you just got a scratch ticket for five grand last night, you know, or you um, just met the love of your life or you've just been in a great groove and um, you've been working out every day for the last three weeks and you just feel amazing. Like those, all of those things come together, right? So what you're doing for your work, whether you're working for a company or you're doing your own thing or whatever that may be, those all come together, right? And so, although it's not necessarily, in my opinion, the responsibility of the leader to, to prod and, and to poke and to, to dive into all these deep issues of everyone on their team, you know, I don't think that's necessarily your place, um, to ask, but if it comes up, you can't shy away from it, right? And that's something that I think um, there's that line, right, where you're not sure whether you're crossing it or, or not crossing it, or you know, is this my responsibility to help if you know they have a flat tire and they don't know how to fix it, or you know, like I said, there's uh, you know maybe a family issue, or you know, someone's in poor health, or someone died, or something like that. I mean, you got to be there, right? I mean, you you need, and they if they trust you and they they come to you with that, you know, you have to be ready to you know, not shy away, right? You got to be ready to, to talk to them and, and, and at the very least listen and, and make them, make them feel heard. So that's number two. Um, you know, number three thing 
from Bill Campbell is, is to lead with first principles, right? So when I interviewed John Barros, who's just a, I think the number one sales trainer in the league right now, especially for software companies, which is, you know, the field that I'm in, um, you know, he spoke about his guiding principles, right? So I think he has 12 that, that guide him and he shares them with his employees. He shares with people he works with. So they know where he's coming from. If he freaks out at them or if he, you know, ask something of them that they don't quite understand. And he's like, hey, you know, here's where I'm coming from, right? And I've had people like Jason Pfeiffer, who is the editor-in-chief of Entrepreneur, uh, Michael Gervais, who's the sports psychologist for the Seahawks. You know, I've listened to Damon John from Shark Tank that all talk about their philosophy that, you know, some people it's a sentence, some people it's 21 words or less. For a few, it's, it's maybe even just a word that people use for the whole year. I'm sorry, Mike. For those on YouTube, my camera's slipping a little bit. Uh, I'm out here in Boston this week and doing this in my in my dad's basement, believe it or not. So I just got my phone here and mic and, you know, hey, you got to make do with what you got. So apologies for that. Uh, anyways, you know, talking about those first principles, right? And, and whatever they may be, it's going to be different for everyone. But you got to lead with those, right? And, and it leads to, you know, my second point. But, but for us, you know, at least for our team, our principles are attitude and effort. Right there's the two things you can control: um, your attitude. Are you positive? Are you encouraging others? Are you, are you doing the best that you can? Are you doing, coming in with a smile on your face, full of energy, and the effort? You know, are you working hard? Are you making the extra call? Are you sending the extra email? Are you doing the extra thing? Are you going above and beyond? Are you being strategic, like attitude and effort. You know, there's gonna be a lot of things you can't control in life. Those are two that you definitely can, no matter what your circumstances are, no matter what your situation is, right? And, and it, this tees into the, set, to the next point from Bill, which is running towards the biggest problems. And when things go south, you double down on those principles, right? So human nature tells us that we want to avoid conflict, right? When we were cavemen and cavewomen, conflict meant you might get kicked out of the tribe. And you might get eaten by, you know, a wild animal, right? You're left out for the cold. You're left out, in, you know, in, in the wild, right? So we don't want conflict, um, but when there's, when there's problems, you got to nip it in the bud and you got to talk through it. And you can't just let the elephant sit there in the room. You got to go, you got to go handle it, right? It's like an overflowing trash bin, right? You, uh, you don't want to just let that, that scent linger. You want to take out the trash. You know, when it's time to take out the trash, take that shit out. You know what I'm saying? So when issues come up, you, know, you got to double down on those first principles. So for us, again, it's attitude, it's effort. If you're having a bad day, bad week, bad month, like, you got to be extra positive. You got you have to have extra energy. You got to maybe work a little bit harder, right? Because you know that that shit's what's going to get you out of that slump. You know, for some other people, it might be maybe your first principle is is that you want to serve other people and you want to uh, put others first, right? So maybe you're having a bad day. Maybe you go pay for the person behind you in Starbucks. Cost you three bucks, right? And maybe that makes you feel good. Maybe that's like a principle for yourself. You know, it could be anything. Right, but whatever is unique and true to you, you gotta double down on that when things get hard. Taking care of yourself, you know, a thing for me personally is, um, you know, setting aside and filling up my cup so that I can fill others up. Right, so that's me taking time in the morning to write, to exercise, to think, to you know, shower, whatever I gotta do in the morning, have my cup of coffee so that I can serve others the rest of the day. And you know, if you if I'm not doing that on a consistent basis things start to deteriorate. And if my cup is empty, I'm not able to pour into other people, right? So that, that's a really big thing. Um, so doubling down on those first principles. Um, I got two more lessons for you. So now the, the, the next one is candor and caring, right? And there's a great, great quote from uh, the legendary Boston Celtics coach, maybe the best basketball coach of all time, not throwing shade at John Wooden, but they're probably right next to each other, Red Auerbach. And he says, the players don't con me because I don't con them, right? The players don't con me because I don't con them. Put simply, you give trust, you get trust. You lead with radical candor. You know, they, they don't do any, they don't, you know, lie to him. They don't cheat him. They don't steal from him because they know he's not going to do that to them, right? They have that equal mutual trust. They're all going towards that same goal. So again, like if there's an issue, you just got to address it. There should be no question especially when you're working with millennials, there should be no question of where people are, you know, what their standing is with you, right? I mean, they should, everyone should know, you know, if they, if they ask, you know, you don't have to go out and say, hey, by the way, Susie, you're the worst person on the team. You're the worst goddamn salesperson I've ever seen in my life. Maybe not. Maybe let's pump the brakes a little bit. But if someone asks you, hey, 
how could I be doing better? Am I doing all right? How was that call? How was that email? Like, and you say, oh, it's great. But deep down, you think it was terrible. You got to maybe give them a compliment sandwich. You got to maybe find a way to do some uh, polite, you know, finesse critiquing. But you got to let people know where they stand, right? At all times. You know, it should never be a surprise to people when they get promoted. And it should never be a surprise to people when they get fired. They should know where they stand at all times. Know what the guidelines are. Know what the principles are, right? Um, And then the last thing, which I thought is just great, is uh, being an evangelist for courage, right? Uh, A mentor of mine once told me um, that his goal was to help others become better than they think they can be. Help others become better than they think they can be, right? And so I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Man, you know, it's not helping people become their best. It's not helping people reach their goals. It's helping, it's knowing where people think they can get to, right? We all have those limiting beliefs. I think I can get to here. He wants to help them get just a little bit higher, get a little bit better than what they thought was possible. So that opens them up to be better and better in the future. I thought that was awesome. So um, we all have those ceilings, right? So being able to, to be that person, to help them be that evangelist for courage, right? And I think that's a great way of, of saying that message as well as like be that evangelist, help other people be more courageous, right? And push them and, and help them think bigger and think wider and deeper and, and you know, see their name up in lights and see them making a lot of money or see them with that promotion or, you know, with that, you know, new health goal that they have or that personal goal that they have to make more friends or whatever it may be, you know, be that evangelist for courage. And I think that's really important as a leader. Um, and so I think this book is, is riddled with great ideas. It's riddled with great quotes. Um, you know, it's, it's got some humor in it as well. And, and like I said, it just really hit me at the right time. So, um, you know, it's been probably almost two months since I read the book and since I woke up on that morning at 3.57 and, you know, it was just shaking because I was just, you know, not in a very good mental spot. Um, and, you know, and that's when I found the book or, or more likely the book found me, you know, coincidentally and how things turn out. And, and I'm grateful for that. So um, I've got a lot to learn, but I think this book is amazing. I'd highly recommend it. Um, I don't know. I don't get paid or anything to say that you should read this book. And I never met Bill. I've never met any of the authors, but I do think it's a great book, especially for that first time leader, especially if you're someone like me who likes to just get shit done. You know, you got that to-do list and you're ripping out emails and you're getting tasks done and, you know, you got to take a step back. And, and as a leader, you know, survey the floor and talk to people and look people in the eye and go grab coffee and go take a walk and, you know, ask how they're doing and, and you know, ask a question like that and then shut up and, and listen for the next 12 minutes. Um, so I'd love to hear if you learned anything from, from this, if you've read the book, if you met Bill, uh, let me know in the comments here on YouTube. Let me know uh, on iTunes on millennialmomentum.net. You can check me out. Again, if you found any value, just an inch of value, uh, it takes you about 47 seconds to you know, hit subscribe and like the video, go to iTunes, hit subscribe, leave a five-star review. All that that does all for all of this is just helps me to reach more people with the message. Um, you know, I'm trying to help myself and others get better, reach their full potential. Uh, I'm on a mission for it. I'd, I'd love for you to join me. So please give me a shout in the comments. Give me a subscribe, a share. Have a great day. Out.